Hi, and welcome to Bonita's Kitchen, and thank you for joining us. Today I am cooking a roast of mousse, but you can also use brisket. Now today's recipe is a viewer's request, and thank you for requesting it. We have got sort of seasonal mousse roasts here. When a neighbor, a family member, or a friend Gives, uh, gifts us either a mousse roast, steak, or sausage. But also, this recipe could be done with brisket or any sort of game meat that you got access to. Today's meat, of course, is a mousse roast. I'll show you just a little bit closer. Um, it's one that I dug out of the freezer and I said to Raymond, it's time. It's time to cook this. It's sort of making those affordable meals again with stuff we already got in our home. So if this interests you, let's get started. Now as you can see here, we got a nice roast of moose meat. It's a darker meat and it don't have, this is a bone. This is a big old bone here so it don't have any marbling, any fat. So as you can see over here to the side I got some uh, trimmings of meat uh, from um, uh, the suet, you can call it, or if you don't have trimmings of your fresh meat, you could use uh, salted beef, if those of you that got access to it. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to season this uh, roast up on both sides. And this is going to be slow cooked here today. This is sort of another one of those slow cooked meals that you can either do in your slow cooker or you could uh, put it in your roaster, slow cook it in the oven, or put it in your skillet, electric skillet. So I'm gonna turn on the skillet here now just to fry off each side of my roast, and then I'll show you. What was yeah, that, right? Yeah, no, what I was saying, like you're saying, like, but slow cooked and stuff mm -hmm. like this, this is a perfect idea if you got company coming tomorrow or something. You could have everything prepared the day in advance, I think. Oh, you it? could. You can. You can most certainly do that, or yeah. uh, just put it in in the morning, mm -hmm. and then at supper time you got a, a beautiful meal. Yeah. That'll be another way to do it. Good on you, Raymond, for just thinking of that. I tell you, not <laughs> too shabby on so this I'm side. I'm just gonna do a drizzle of oil. Now you don't have to uh, put uh, the fry marks onto this roast or any roast. You can just put it all into the roaster and put all the seasonings and I'll give you those as we go here. Oh, but I like frying it off first so that it's got that nice uh, marbling on there and the flavor. I'm going to put some of those, I got about a cup full of the, the meat, meat trimmings there from the roast. Uh, you can get it smaller than that, but the butcher that I got it from, he just gave me big old chunks, eh, Raymond? And I said, yeah. I'm not going to make it into suet. I'm just <laughs> going to leave it chunks because this is going to build those flavors in there for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the times when I don't have, like, the meat trimmings um, already in my freezer, because if I get a roast, I got too much uh, fat on there, I usually take that off and I freeze it so I can have it in advance. But I do ask the butcher. They don't always, if they're watching here today, they don't always want to give us that trimmings because it's probably not uh, a part of their store regulations, but sometimes they do have it in the freeze, freezer section. So ask them of that. This again today is a slow cooked roast that we're doing because we don't, any kind of game meat is very tough. And you want to build those flavors. I can remember when I was a child and dad would cook a roast and he would do it in our wood stove um, and it'd be on a slow heat. I'm, I'm sure Raymond can remember this because oh, he'd have night. one going probably on a Friday night or a yeah. Saturday night. And it's all about building those flavors. So that's where I got that little trick from and I'll, I'll share that one with you as we go. But I just want to fry off this. I'm going to tell you a few of the ingredients as we go, of course, but let's get back to this uh, cooking of this roast. Frying it on both sides. So right now, all I'm letting that do is cook a little bit, maybe a couple of minutes on each side. I'll flip it in a moment. But I got a nice little bunch here of rosemary and thyme that I'm gonna be using, a nice fresh bunch. And if you wanted to have that nice smoky flavor, 
like you're slow cooking it outside on the barbecue or if you're doing it in a, uh, a smoker. This is called liquid smoke and you only need about a half a teaspoon full of that to get that smoky flavor. It really puts that flavor it's there. Icky, icky yeah, flavor, icky isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, a lot of the times, this is what it's about, is about building flavors. Yeah. You're going to see here today as well, I'm going to um, mix all of this together with some vegetables and we'll show you those. I'm going to flip this roast in a moment and then we'll show you that. And if you don't have fresh rosemary or thyme, you could use dried. And if you don't have either one of those and you got savory, you could use savory. That'll give it a nice little flavor. In here in this bowl, I got some chopped carrots, turnip, a, a potato, celery, and I got onions, um, some garlic, Worcestershire sauce, and I got some steak sauce here, but you can also use a couple of tablespoonfuls of barbecue sauce. That's just to give that extra added flavor and a couple of cups of beef broth, or you could use your OXO tubes in some water, whatever you got available. So let's flip that roast now and see what he looks like. I know. He smells I some good. Smell, the <laughs> smell and the sound. And just looking from this side of the camera, like with all the vegetables there. It's lovely, isn't it? Looking oh yummy on really. We got a feast today. Flip this roast over. And if, uh, I might have to scream a little bit here now because my fryer is gone. But if you got a roast that's frozen, let it thaw. Let it thaw in the fridge overnight. Cook it off the next day when you're ready to use it. So now let's start building those flavors. And I hope that I'm making everybody's mouth just <laughs> drooling out there from uh, cooking up this roast. Because like you said... If, a, if it's not, I, I'm let them know that I'm drooling yeah, just as much. You are, I know, Raymond, you're so, right, ready for this. Yeah. And this is where it's important. The same thing with a brisket, making sure it's got that building of flavors to bring up, up bring it up a notch is what mm -hmm. I'm going to say. So what I'm doing here, you can again do this in a roaster, your skillet, your slow cooker. So this is called like a six to eight hour meal that's going to take a little bit to do. So put your vegetables on the bottom and right now what we're going to do, we're going to take this roast, let me see how he is on this side. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, I'm going to take this roast and put on top of the vegetables. I'm going to keep cooking off these little pieces of uh, trimmings, the beef trimmings, or you can call it suet, or if you don't have access to that and you've got a big bucket of salt beef, take a couple of chunks of that salt yeah. beef, cut it off. Just eliminate the salt because the salt in the salt beef will be more than enough. So I'm going to just fry those onions a bit. You don't need to. You can put those onions over there as well and leave it. Or you can just give it that little bit of um, caramelization. We got here two tablespoonful of that W sauce, the Worcestershire <laughs> sauce. <laughs> uh, and I know, thank okay. you. That's a good way to say the W sauce. Yeah, yeah. thank you to everybody that has given me all sorts of uh, yeah. pointers on how to pronounce, pronounce that. But I am the worst with that. I got a half a teaspoon full of that liquid smoke. I'm going to put over this because I want that smoky flavor going on in this roast today. And I got the two tablespoonfuls of that steak sauce. Now, it pretty much the steak sauce um, got a flavor in its own that is good. But my dad would say, just build those flavors, kick it off a notch, and that's what we're doing here you today. To be careful, you stop around the duplicate. Oh yeah, that is fine. And I got two chunks of garlic. I'm just going to put them in your hole. So I'm going to check this, tell you some more what we're going to do. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm actually I'm going to fry off a piece of this rosemary in there just to get that flavor going. And the same thing with the thyme. Just put it in with the, with the rest of that uh, shavings of meat. And I'm going to put the rest of them air over this uh, mousse roast. And again, if you're using a brisket, pretty much do the same thing. But also what you have to remember, 
use the flavors that your family enjoy eating because if you don't like any of those ingredients I'm putting in there and you want to add in your flavors, that's fine. But just build them. Build all of them together and then slow cook it. I'm going to put this over now into my pot. It's almost like I got fireworks in yeah. today, right? Are you yeah. hearing? Yeah. That's the, that's the rosemary and the thyme popping there when the when the king gets it. I'm celebration, gonna, celebration time. It is a celebration. Yeah. This is a nice roast today. We're going to slow cook and, uh, and we're going to have it later with some delicious sides. I'm going to show you that. It smells absolutely amazing in here. I'm just, I'm just vibrating here to know. I mean, I'm not even a big mousse lover, but I know when those flavors is built and you've got all the taste of everything that you love, mm -hmm. you're not even going to know this is a mousse roast. But yeah. for you, you want to know well, it's a mousse see, roast. This is when you bought this up there a few days ago, but the mousse, I was saying, well, that means I'm going to get to... <laughs> you're, you're, the amount of you're going to enjoy it. You're yeah. going to have a lot for sure. <laughs> now I'm going to deglaze this pan. And that's our music. And what we're going to do is deglaze our pan with two cups of uh, beef broth. And then we're going to toss that in and around that mousse roast. Or whatever roast you decide to use. So there's a lot of delicious goodness in there. So pretty much you're just going to pour that in around and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Oh my gosh, it smells absolutely amazing in here right now. Now I love using this skillet and I would leave a link to this skillet if, uh, if you, you wish to check it out. Um, but I also love using my slow cooker because that's my family, uh, that's my family chef. I'm going to say because mm -hmm. you turn it on and let it go. So I'm just going to put the lid on this now, turn it on low, and let's talk a little bit about that. So if you're using a slow cooker, you'll put your slow cooker on low, leave it there between six and eight hours. You can go to work and leave it, come home and have yourself this delicious slow cooked roast. And in our case today is a mousse roast or it could be a brisket. Also, if you're using your skillet, skillet you can't leave unattended, but if you're home and you're cleaning and just doing all sorts of home things, put it on low, let it cook there anywhere from four to five hours, because you want to slow cook this and have it nice and tender. And if you're putting it in your oven, put it on a 300 degree Fahrenheit heat, preheated oven. You can even go 275 if you want it to be a little bit longer and cook it anywhere from four to five hours, the same as your skillet. So I hopefully that interests you. And when this is done, I'm going to show you. I'm excited. Wow. And, and I'm going to get to taste. <laughs> You're going to get to taste. You're going to get to have a lot of this meat. A lot and of tasting. I, oh, and I hope that uh, we can get some more people that we're going to share it with as I'm well. I'm sure we could come up with a few, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm excited to say that our slow cooked mousse roast is cooked to perfection and as well if it was a brisket or any other roast that you're cooking slow. Come in and have a little look. Hopefully Raymond the steam is not going to take you over too much. <laughs> I'm sure you're not going to mind because you can smell. No, smile. I promise <sighs> you that I won't say a word. You won't? No. No. <laughs> e have been the best kind all day just smelling this and this rose here today is falling apart I mean you can see from what it looked like when it went in and the bone is just about off the rose I'm gonna plate it up and show you what it all looks like gosh I know Raymond just look look at the bone just off the, the mm -hmm. meat there and the meat is so tender I'm going to scoop up the vegetables now and put it around it we're going to serve ours here today with a tasty uh, batch of potato fries that was done in the slow cooker. I'm going to take some of these vegetables and put around here and some of that uh, fried uh, meat fat. Oh my gosh, that is so lovely. Raymond, can you see yourself with a fork in there? <laughs> I know I can. I just love when you ask me questions oh my like gosh, that. Gosh, this is just too good. <laughs> 
So now I got some fries over here to the side. Just put a sprinkle of salt and pepper on there. But just look, I can take this away. I'm not even going to use a knife to cut this. Just look at this delicious meat. And I got the juice there off <laughs> to the side. I think I'm going to pass this one to Raymond and we'll just let him, oh. let him tell us how... You're too good. What, Elle, what you think mm -hmm. of that? Oh my gosh. So there's some drippings. There's more drippings in there. If you want to make yourself a quick gravy, you mm -hmm. could do that. Or you can just use the juice. Oh my gosh. Now I got to have a little taste, Raymond. Seriously. This is ten thumbs up. Oh, that's right. We only got two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got, uh, and you also uh, got mm -hmm. your mouthful. You're, you're, I uh, know, yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to give you one of these fries. Oh my gosh, too good deed. Now I'm going to get my fork. Okay, sounds good. I think if you let this slow cook anymore, Raymond, it would actually been just gravy in our pot. Well, I, I was, I was going to say soup because it's, it's <laughs> I know. Yeah. But that's what it's about. It's about cooking it slow, building those flavors, and putting the flavors in there that you enjoy eating. Now I'm going to have a little taste. I got a little bit of that fried um, fat there as well. Oh my gosh. Mm. Drop the... Drop the fork, delicious. Drop the fork, tasting. You would never say that that was mousse that I cooked there today. And if you as well got yourself a nice roast of any kind and you wanted to just to slow cook and enjoy that aroma all day cooking, that is perfect. Or come home from work and having it. Two thumbs up again. Now I'll tell you how to get this recipe. I love to be able to share this roast with you folks today. But I know you'll cook it pretty soon. Comfort food in itself. Oh my gosh. We will post the recipe here on YouTube. And under this video, um, you would see an arrow pointing down or see more. Also on our Facebook page at Bonita Kitchen as well at www.bonitaskitchen.com. And if you can't find it at any of those places, visit us or send me a message at bonitakitchen at gmail.com. I'm not going to take any more of your time. We know it's precious and I know we've enjoyed you guys stopping by here today. On behalf of myself, Raymond and our team, and from our kitchen to yours, thank you for joining us and you have a wonderful day. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have a fry. I think I'll try one in a little price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yum. Join us by the sea, our journey in covenant, always an open door, the neatest kitchen to yours, the neatest kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. And don't forget to join us again on Bonita's Kitchen. <laughs>